Hey guys, in this video I'm showing you in real time a ceramic coating and paint correction I did at a customer's house without a fancy garage in super hot and humid conditions. And I'm gonna give you guys some very simple strategies on exactly how to do this and show you why you don't need the expensive stuff to get started. But before I get into that, if you missed the live business training I hosted last night showing you guys exactly how to scale your detailing businesses past six figures doing exactly what you see me doing in this video, I have a temporary replay that is coming down in one week, okay? It's a matter of days and it's available in the YouTube description description box below. So grab the replay before you do anything else and make sure to watch that because it's a training I only host about once a year. And if you are ready to either get started or scale your detailing business using the proven principles to bring customers just like this Honda Pilot customer getting a ceramic coating to you for free online without having to go find them, you cannot afford to miss that replay. You can go again in the YouTube description box below and grab the link to that. Now let me jump in here. I just highlighted this is a Honda Pilot. I also want to say that this Honda Pilot is garage kept in this particular customer's garage. Okay, so the garage you're looking at is not my garage. It's literally just a customer's garage. And the very first thing that I want to highlight here is the fact that I'm doing this in unbelievably hot and unbelievably humid conditions. When you're doing this day in and day out, you learn that this whole mantra of you can't do paint correction outside. You can't do paint correction in hot conditions. You can't apply ceramic coatings in hot and humid conditions. It's really just not true. So the very first thing I'm doing here is a simple paint enhancement. And I want to explain a very simple strategy or strategies that I'm using to make sure that I don't get in my own way. The primary reason, by the way, that most detailers or a lot of detailers online will say you can't do paint correction in hotter conditions conditions is because, number one, it can be difficult to correct paint with any type of polish if the paint is hot because the polish tends to dry quickly. The liquid in a polish is basically the, let's just say, substrate that the abrasives are suspended in. The reason why it can be a problem if the polish dries too quickly is that the abrasives don't have enough liquid to move around in and therefore cannot abrade the paint in sort of this uh, way that the polish is designed to. So the drying out can be an issue. The second thing that can sometimes be an issue and is often pointed out in the more technical parts of the detailing world is something called swelling. And essentially the analogy that I like to use to describe swelling is when you are polishing car paint and that car paint heats up, sometimes there's kind of this idea that the clear coat starts to expand. And as the clear coat expands, it can sort of start to hide scratches because as the clear coat expands, it's kind of like putting a little bit of a Sharpie mark on a balloon that's not blown up. Then when you blow it up, as the balloon expands, the Sharpie mark doesn't disappear, but it is harder to see because the ink sort of gets pulled apart and it's it's not quite so dark, it's not quite so close together, it's just a little bit harder to see that Sharpie mark. The issue here is clear coat was actually designed to withstand really, really high temperatures, first of all. Second of all, clear coat can get unbelievably hot and in some ways it can even work in your favor. Primarily what I want to emphasize here when it comes to heat or polishing is that when I can polish really hot car paint that is not necessarily in direct sun, the hotness or the heat on the car paint is actually not that big of a deal. It's one of the biggest factors that allows people to quote unquote correct paint in a mobile unit or outside quote unquote, even though we're not technically outside in the elements. If we're not in direct sun, the heat actually is not an issue with the paint correction process. It tends to be more of a difficulty in the ceramic coating application process. So here are my top tips to basically eliminate the heat problem in your paint correction world when you can get out of direct sun like I'm doing here. Number one, I always like to keep a bottle of cool distilled water next to me and I'm spraying the paint basically the entire time. Yes, I think it does immediately cool the paint, but it also more than anything gives me a little extra lubricity so that as the polish dries a little bit quicker, I can simply add more water. The polish that I tend to use is actually a water soluble polish. And if you can make that happen, it makes the whole situation even a little bit easier because again, the water soluble polish works really well with water. It'll actually allow those abrasives to continue to move around, give you a little bit more cycle time on the paint. Secondly, I also like to use a fair amount of downward pressure in situations where I'm trying to really decrease the cycle time on the paint. I'm trying to get the correction done, get the finishing done and move on with my life. So a fair amount of downward pressure with the right polish something like Meguiar's 205, 105, something more uh, non-diminishing abrasive polish is what I tend to use. Again, with if it can be water soluble, that's perfect, but I like to use a medium cut pad or a microfiber cutting pad because I can manipulate those with a foam interface where I can put a fair amount of downward pressure, get the cut that I want pretty immediately, and then pretty much right after that, you know, spend less than 20, 30 seconds on the paint, getting the cut done and finishing the paint with the same polish, not having to change anything. If anything, just changing my pad, but actually not even in sometimes, in some cases, not even adding more polish on the paint, simply blowing out the pad using a seasoned pad that's been primed, potentially a foam black finishing pad, and then using a little bit of water on the paint with the uh, leftover polish, the residue that's already on the paint, and just using that to actually jewel up the paint or to get that shine back, that gloss back, so that I get rid of any haze that may have happened in that correction phase. The reason why that works so well in environments like this is because it's fast. It's a short cycle time. Now, moving on to the ceramic coating, as you guys can see me applying it here, this is P&S Legend coating. It's a really, really great retail grade coating that lasts for a long time. But the only thing that I want to highlight here more than anything else 
is that I think it is a total myth that you cannot apply ceramic coatings in environments like this. I do it all the time, every day, and yes, while I have a nice studio now, it is not always possible for me to get customers to drop their cars off at the studio for me to take care of them. There's a couple key things that you need to be aware of. Number one, flash times tend to go down in the heat and in the humidity. It is totally possible to apply the ceramic coating, even in direct sun sometimes, but the flash time goes way, way up, even sometimes instantaneously, and you have to actually remove that ceramic coating immediately. Number two, if you can put the car in the garage like I'm doing here, that is obviously ideal. You don't need a bunch of space or a bunch of room to work around the car. You just need enough space to sit in front and beside and behind the car, apply the coating and remove it so it does not have to be some sort of a roomy garage. Number three, oftentimes I will over apply the first one, two, three applications before I switch my applicator because of the high humidity. I'd actually rather have more residue of the coating as I go around different panel to panel on the uh, microfiber applicator rather than less. It gives me much more spread and I actually find it's a little bit easier to remove the coating when you've over applied in these environments and the reason for that, and I don't mean over applied as in beyond the boundaries of the panel I'm applying to, I mean over applied in applying a little bit more ceramic coating than I otherwise would. The simple reason for that is because when you are removing a coating here and the flash time goes way down, it does get a little bit stickier depending on what ceramic coating you're using and so you can increase your chances of high spots. The reason why adding a little bit more liquid makes it easier is in the same way that adding a little bit of water to a terry cloth towel or to a microfiber towel actually helps you absorb water, right? If you spilled milk on the ground, it's sometimes easier to get a towel and spritz it with water and then clean up the milk because the liquid binds to the liquid and it actually makes it a little bit more absorbent in an immediate sense, not soaking the towel, but just giving it a little bit of spray of water. It's the same logic here. It makes it a little bit easier when you're removing things. If it's not such a thin, thin spread of ceramic coating, there's a little bit more, there's a little bit, li the liquid binds to the liquid and it allows you to remove it a little bit easier. The third thing I want to highlight here is that I am pretty immediately switching my initial buffing off towel. And the reason for that is because it's a little bit harder to keep the initial buffing towel to be the only towel you're using for half the car like I normally would in a nice temperature heated, you know, controlled environment because the humidity uh, does cause the towel to literally absorb moisture in the air and you will really start to notice that as you're removing the ceramic coating in real time. So guys, those are the things that you can do to immediately start to apply ceramic coatings and do paint correction outdoors. Once again, if you want to dive way deeper into the subject from a business perspective, you must go below in the YouTube description box, grab the replay while it's still available. I'm pushing hard because there was so much stuff that I went over last night in the live business training. And if you are a detailing entrepreneur, you're ready to take things to the next level, or you're ready to start with the playbook that'll allow you to bypass all the things the other detailers are doing that are not working, build a Google monopoly on the first page and bring ceramic coating customers to you. Grab the replay in the YouTube description box. It's going to go way deeper than what I just talked about. And I will see you guys in the next video.